Well, hello, lapidary lovers, rock nuts, rock nerds. Mike here. Welcome back to my channel. And I thought I'd give you a quick update on how my home-built high-capacity rock tumbler is going. This is actually number two of my high-capacity rock tumbler builds. Number one has been decommissioned. It worked okay, but it had some deficiencies. So we moved on to rock tumbler build number two. Uh, this one is much higher capacity. I don't, I'm not even using it to its full capacity. I could get two more of these six-pound barrels on here or a 12-pound barrel, which I just might do in the future. Uh, so I've got two six-pound barrels and a four-and-a-half-pound barrel on here right now. And this, this tumbler has been running continuously for a few weeks now. And I thought I would show you how it's going with it and uh, the, the, the minor, minor problems I'm having with it and uh, a modification I made based on a suggestion from my buddy Jim, who is my mentor in all things lapidary. So let me shut it down here and um, I'll show you what's going on. Let me take the barrels off and we'll zoom in on the... Uh, on a few features here and see what's going on. Is that showing up? Yeah, the uh, the heat shrink tubing I put on the uh, shafts has gotten all wrinkled up and uh, the barrels are slowly beating it to death. So I'm going to leave it on there for now because we still got really good traction between these steel um, shafts and the tumblers barrels so and and i don't know running over the lumps just gives a little ag extra agitation i'm thinking but i'm thinking what's going to happen is this is going to get more and more ragged over time and what i'm probably going to do is just have to, have to cut it off take this apart and put new heat shrink on it but instead of one long continuous piece down the whole shaft i think what i will do is i will put it in in smaller sections and i think that's less likely to get twisted up and wrinkled up like this. I think the problem is that um, um, we're applying more torque in some areas of this long piece of heat, heat shrink than in others, and it's just twisting it. So I'm thinking small sections would probably solve that problem. So, uh, hey, leave a comment if you uh, are familiar with this issue and know how to uh, resolve it. I would appreciate it. But I think the smaller sections would probably do it. And then the other thing I did, or a modification I made, is right here, this fan, which blows on the motor to keep it cool. Uh, my buddy Jim suggested I should put like a 12-volt computer fan blowing on it just to keep it cool, because I've been lamenting the fact that this was not a double-shaft motor that I could mount a fan blade on, because the motor got fairly hot running. Um, and he said, well, just mount a computer fan there. You'll need a 12-volt power supply for it. And I thought, yeah, could do that, or... Digging through my junk box, I found a 120-volt fan. So no power supply needed. I just wired this into the mains current that's driving this whole mess. So that uh, when the motor's on, the fan's on. And the motor stays a whole lot cooler. It's just a little warm to the touch with the fan running. Even though it's a very hot day out here, and this has been running continuously for weeks now. Very hot day, and this is just warm to the touch. So, you know, it's even cooler at night when things cool off. So on the whole, I'm very happy with the way my tumbler's working. Yeah, at some point I'm going to have to fix this. But for now, you know, it's, it's working pretty good. Now, let's see. I had, I, had the, I had the barrels up here like this. Let me start it up again. And initially I had a problem with the barrels walking off towards that end. And I put in, I don't know if you can see it over there. I put in a little bearing over there that they could ride up against when they walked over to that end. For some reason they've stopped walking to the end. They'll walk over to within, I don't know, an inch, half an inch of it and just stop. And they, they don't touch it anymore. And they're not showing any inclination to walk the other way to the other end. I have another bearing I can mount over here if necessary. But they have not shown any inclination to walk this way. Yeah, walk this way. A little Aerosmith. Yeah, that would be good for background music right now. But uh, So I haven't bothered mounting the second bearing over here because they're not walking this way. 
and this bearing's not really seeing much use because they're not walking all the way over that way anymore. So I'm not sure what changed, but well, they're staying put basically. So that's great. Now, how is the tumbling action working? That's the important part. You know, the rest of this is all just, you know, incidental to getting the rocks to actually tumble. Well, I'll tell you what, the rocks in here are almost ready for pre-polish. So they've already been through rough and uh, medium grit. They're in medium grit now, but they're almost done with medium grit. So they'll be ready for pre-polish. Um, the rocks in here are about ready for medium grit. And the rocks in here have not been tumbling all that long, and they're still in rough grit, and they've probably still got a ways to go. But the rocks in here, I think I'm going to give you a look at them, because they are really knock-your-socks-off pretty rocks. So let me stop the tumbler again, and we'll take a quick look at some of the rocks in here. They're still in rough. They're in rough grit, and they've got a ways to go. But they're getting really pretty already. So let me, let me reposition the camera. We'll open this tumbler up and we'll see what we got in there. Okay, let's take a look at some of the stones in this barrel here. And remember, these are still in rough grit, all right? Here's a piece of jasper. There's a lot of jasper in here that I found while I was rock hounding out in Wyoming. Multicolored jasper, picked it up off the ground, so it's tumbling away. It's getting there, still a little rough, needs to be in rough grit a while longer. This is a little banded iron formation. Nice. Let's see what else we've got here. Whoa. Um, this is some fully agatized petrified wood. I had some pieces. I have a lot of videos of cutting uh, petrified wood, and a lot of it was so fissured it just broke up into pieces. And this is some of the fully agatized pieces in there just tumbling away. Got some nice red and yellow color on it. Uh, this is a pretty, pretty plain rock. This one didn't turn out as colorful as I hoped. All right. Well, we'll leave it in there as uh, ballast, basically. Look at this. Look at this. That's some very interesting... This is somewhere between agate and jasper. I mean, it's not fully agatized, but it's way too translucent to be jasper. And it's just multicolored, very pretty. Let's see here. Here's another piece of this multicolored Wyoming jasper in here. I love these big tumblers. I can get the bigger pieces in. Just the colors in this are amazing. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Here's some interesting pieces. Here's some more of that multicolored jasper. Yellows, reds, oranges. And this is an agate. But this has all got fortification agate in it all around this, this rind on the outside. So, yeah, this is, this is an agate. So this is the be the intern, in, internal, solid internal part. And around the outside on this rind, we've got lots of fortification agate. I don't think it's fair burn, but it is a nice agate. I'll have to look at that a little closer once it's tumbled better and see if I can figure out what sort of agate it is. I don't think it's fair burn, but it's possible. Oh, and look at this piece of jasper here. Red, green, yellow, just crazy. This is coming along nice. This is getting really smooth. I think these aren't going to need to be in rough grit much longer. Just look at this beautiful stuff. My goodness. Got some more petrified wood. Just crazy. I, I don't even know what this stuff is. I picked it up because it was pretty. Uh, like I say, it's it's way too translucent to be called jasper, but not clear enough to be agate, so I don't know what it is, but it's, it's somewhere on the cusp between jasper and agate, and it's very pretty. Uh, this just looks like petrified wood to me, and uh, there's just all kinds of good stuff down in here. Oh yeah, look at the colors. 
Again, this is petrified wood, fully agatized. Uh, some more jasper, multicolored jasper, red and black, or yellow and black. Look at the colors. My goodness, just crazy. Crazy purple, purple and black. Some nice orange jasper, some yellow and black jasper, and just multicolored jasper with veins of different colors in it. Sort of a, a, a dark green background with veins of yellow and red in it. Very cool. So that's what's, what's, what's tumbling in here. Some really cool stuff. So uh, I don't want this video to get too long. This is just a quick update, but I'll put all this stuff back in the tumbler. We'll open the other one and show you what's going on in it because it's really neat too. All right, let's have a look in this other barrel. Neat stuff here. Some more agate. That is that is going to be really pretty once that's once that's polished up. Got some nice fortification lines through here. This may be. I mean, I, I just picked a bunch of this stuff up when I was out um, hunting in Wyoming. I saw this and I thought, ah, nice. It had a rind on it, but as the rind's getting ground down, you can see the the agate. Some more agate here. This one really doesn't have any bands in it. Uh, we got some banded iron. I found a lot of banded iron out on that those Wyoming uh, rock hunting trips. So a few of the smaller pieces have made it in here to be tumbled. Some more interesting jasper. Not quite as pretty as some of the other stuff, but uh, lots of different colors in there. Petrified wood. This is petrified wood right here. Um, a small shard that broke off of um, a chunk I got from the Dobell Ranch when I was out there picking up petrified wood. So this has got some really nice yellow color in it. And I'll tell you what, these are getting close. These are closer than I thought to being done with rough grit. I thought they were going to have to be in here for a while longer. Oh, this is a big chunk of petrified wood right here. I found this. There's actually another piece of it in here somewhere. When I was hiking in Arizona, I found this. And a uh, beautiful piece of petrified wood. I knew it would tumble up nice. Um, it had kind of a neck in the middle of it, and I, I broke it along the neck so it was small enough to tumble up both halves. So the other half's in here somewhere. This is some purple jasper, which I bought at a rock shop and turned out to be not very purple. But it's tumbling up nice. Tumbling up nice. Where's some of the really interesting stuff? Here's some. Here's some more of that multicolored jasper. I found when I was rock hounding in Wyoming, just amazing colors in that, just crazy. There should be a couple pieces of that in here. Some more banded iron. Yeah, some more banded iron, some more interesting jasper with strange color inclusions. Yeah, these are... These are getting remarkably smooth. I think they are about done with rough grit. Yeah, here's some more of that petrified wood with the yellow agate in it. Very pretty. I like that yellow color in there. And the orange and the red and the black. Very nice. Let's see. This looks like more banded iron. The banded iron, I think, is the hardest stuff in here because it's... It's getting smooth, but it's still a little rough. So this other stuff is a lot smoother. Oh, here's the other half of that piece of petrified wood. Yeah, it kind of, kind of broke here into two pieces, and I'm tumbling both pieces. And oh, they are just so gorgeous, both of them. This is some of the prettiest petrified wood I've ever tumbled or even polished in any way. I wish I could find more of it. Just out hunting and saw that piece sticking out of the ground. Dug it up. There was nothing else like it around it. This is a weird rock found out in Wyoming. It's got some veins of purple something in it. Maybe amethyst. Not sure. But it's tumbling up. What else we got here? Yeah, there's some more petrified wood. Looks like a couple pieces. 
Yeah, that's petrified wood. That's petrified wood. That looks like some more agate. Uh, little bits of petrified wood. Um, some of this I put in here just as tumbling media to help fill up the barrel and make sure everything gets, uh, you know, ground evenly. And some of it's broken off of the, the rough chunks in the beginning during the initial tumbling. Oh, yeah, here's, here's some more amazingly colored jasper. That's just, the coloration on that's just crazy. That's a piece I cut off of a big chunk about the size of a bowling ball that I got out there. And unfortunately, it is a very colorful chunk of rock. I had to drive off-road quite a ways to find it. I found it while I was hiking, and I wasn't going to carry that big, huge rock back to the truck, so I drove off-road a long way to get it. And uh, I cut into it with our big Lortone lapidary saw and found out that the color doesn't go in but about a half inch on the outside most places. So this is a piece of the outside of that big boulder of jasper and it's very colorful so anyway let me get all this stuff back in the tumbler and get the tumbler going again because um, if it ain't tumbling the rocks ain't getting smoother i'm glad i did my uh, update today because it gave me a chance to look at the rocks in these two big drums and they are further along on the rough grit than i thought they would be so they may be going to a uh, medium grit very soon another day or two i think i'm gonna let them go Another day or two, then maybe sort through them and maybe leave some behind that aren't quite ready and then take the rest to medium grit. Yeah, like I said, the uh, banded iron seems to be a little rougher than most of the other stuff in there still, but I think it's harder than a lot of the other stuff in there. All right, so let's get this beast running again. There we go, back up and running. Well, if you found this uh, update on my uh, home-built tumbler and the rocks in it interesting, educational, informative, whatever, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe to see my future videos. Sooner or later, these rocks are going to be done, and you'll get a look at them when they're done and nice and shiny. They're only shiny when they're wet now. So subscribe to see those future videos and other uh, lapidary videos that I've got coming out, rock hunting videos, fossil hunting videos. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching this one. Bye.